Okay, first things first. A little chartreuse UV polar chenille, I believe. And you can use the crinkle flash, whatever you want back here. I just prefer this because it's the right length the braid's the right diameter to give me this proper prop in the very back. So let's, let's give this an anchor. Tie that down. And we'll just go for four nice tight turns. And they're right in front of each other. I mean, almost on top of each other, they're real tight. I don't like to take up a lot of space with this hot spot. Finish this right up on top. Get that down. Tie this off. Okay. Come more. Oops. Do that. Come more. That's secure. So now the application of one of my favorite new products in the evolution of this fly, the Ultra Squid, we had found some other eyes that were functional, but not exactly what we wanted and not in the color schemes that we were looking for. And so we have quite a number of tasty squid eyes here and they're all UV, all metallic very nicely done size wise on either a 30 or 40 pound mono i think and in this case we're going to go with the chartreuse nice contrast in color i should have brought my uv light in Whew, dang. could have had a uv party after okay so two eyes and as you can see they're pretty creepy those are some good little creepy eyes, nice and sparkly. Very nicely cut lengthwise. So what I do here, I'm gonna take and even them up. They're slightly different. And then individually, I'm gonna smash this end with my pliers. And this is just to make a flat little landing, honestly, out of the mono. And then I give them a little bend. Just a little bit of a bend. And you can put these in at whatever length you want. I like them to be long and you'll see why. Let's give that a pinch. And then these are going in right on the flank. Right exactly on the side of the fly. And roughly to the same length as the polar flash. Okay, so we'll tie that down. Makes a nice little landing, see where it's at. Let's put the other one down. And all you gotta do is just get them tied down and then you can adjust accordingly if necessary. Okay, so those are down. That one out. And as you can see, they have nice presence, pop out really good. And they're being partially forced by the vise too, which makes it a little, a little artificial out. But okay, so here we go. Out the back, we're going to go with a little Kingfisher blue. Roughly a half inch material. Cut that off there. Come back. And this is going to be a little spike tail just a little bit longer than where the hook is, directly on top. Right 
directly on top. Cut this off. Looks good. Okay, so now I want some hackle tips. Nice grizzly hackle tip. Pretty much all the ultra squids are a variety of colors with roughly a, the same grizzly hackle tips. I really love the contrast to grizzly against other colors. And these look like two very nice ones. Same length. On a good soft saddle, you can take them from the same place for this fly. It doesn't matter. They don't have to be match sets from opposite sides. I personally like to have a little bit of the downy fiber from the back end of the feather in the fly. It's just a nice effect. But if it doesn't work out that way, that's just fine. So, and I like these basically to be twice as long as the back of the fly. So as you can see, these protrude out is basically inch and a half from where the fly ends, or where the hook is, excuse me. So let's take and strip them. and place them. And I'll put this first one on, so right here. So you notice that I'm putting it just above where the eye meets the body of the fly. Now I'm going to tie this in right up to that point, and I'm going to give it a little pull in. You notice how pulling this tip over the front of the fly towards me makes that hackle tip turn that exact same way. I'm going to bring that in a little bit and secure it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to cut this tag off. I'm not chasing that thing around. Do the same thing on this side. I'm going to do the same thing. It's kind of giving me a little grief. There it is. There it is right there. Okay. Oh. Okay. So there's that. Hackle tips. Nice little tag tail. Your sick ultra eyes. That's going to be yummy. Okay. So, in this case, this one was all black and blue. I think I'm going to really kind of goof with this, this leg coloration. So, give these dice secure. See the way they want to lay. Nice tinted out. Basically, twice the long length of the back of the fly, so you got some good swim. And then we'll take this forward. And I'm going to put in some Mylar tinsel. Now you can use flat pearl braid or whatever you want for this, but I like Mylar tinsel. I'm going to use it to cover up this spot. And you could also use a felt pen and just make it fluorescent or whatever. But I like a little reflection back here to cover up this bump. and create a little space between these sections. Okay, now I'm going to tie that down right there. Get that out of the way. I'm going to climb back up it just a little bit, give myself a nice little platform. Right there. And we're going to put in some rubber legs. And you can use whatever rubber legs you want for this. I happen to prefer these because of their, their barring and the translucency of the, the leg. And I'm actually going to use two different colors in this case. Just a little contrast, show you what you can do. There we go. Back in. 
Okay, these two. So usually what I do is normally I'd use, you know, two of a leg. I'm going to use, pull two of these off. Take that. And then I'll just make two match sets. One with the Kingfisher Blue and one with the Violet. One each. Okay. One each. Let's see? First place, go around the thread. Give ourselves a little ring here. Go around the thread. Find your spot. And I want these to be just below where I tied in the hackle tip and kind of on the bottom. I'll show you here. Okay. Do this other side. Oops, didn't get it. <laughs> okay. There we go. Right in the front of the, where the tinsel lands, and you can see I'm just splitting the legs. I like that split effect. And then I'll take this whole whack of legs and pull them back here. and put them under my magnet. Now they're really out of the way. And then I'll make a dubbing loop right in front of the leg landing. One, two, three. Remember to wrap the base of your loop. Let's put a little dubbing wax on this. Stash it back here. Okay, first composite loop. These will be done in one consecutive, or one continuous loop, two very small stations. First station is going to be this Kingfisher blue and very metallic dubbing I like here. You can, again, use whatever you want. This is custom blend from a good friend. I don't have a lot of it. <laughs> so here we go. Then predator wrap. Surprise, surprise, right? And then again, just one inch of that. Still my favorite working length, roughly inch, inch and a quarter, as far as the total volume of it in the loop is ideal it out. And I'm cutting this roughly barely an inch and a quarter. Barely. Maybe more like an inch and an eighth. A little bit shorter than the norm. Pull that out. Set that in the loop. And I'm making that 60-40 so they're not don't land in the same place. 60% on this side, 40 on that. Fold this back. We'll dub that out later. And I'm gonna take this last little piece I had here and I'm gonna put it on top here for substance. Same color. Okay, first loop. That'll be the shoulder. And then we need some black. And this happens to be a midnight black. Fusion dub. Midnight has a nice blue and copper accents to it. It's quite lovely and it's a good length for this. Pull it out. That'll be enough. And 
make forward hackle section. And a good inch and a quarter of nice fine little ostrich tips here. Check length. Now our shoulder is going to be that long, so obviously we want our forward hackle to be slightly longer, but not too long to cover up the entire fly. So, good inch and a quarter. Let's cut that off. Let's pull this out again to that end of my fingers, and then we'll spread it out. And I know I've shown this trick to before toothbrush but this is kind of a it barbs the ends spreads them out fairly evenly makes a pretty nice spread so you can put that right on the loop and fold this over back over that and there's the forward hackle okay so i've made my composite loop back there i'm going to take my little this fluorescent pen and color in where i tied in those legs I'd already given it a little touch up. I'm gonna double up here so that white thread isn't popping too hard white. Makes a nice little chartreuse spot. Okay, so we've got our dubbing loop in play. Got our thread all the way forward. Stay put. Got some water over here. We'll take and put these loops in. Let's see, I got a leg stuck in there already. Okay, the loop open all the way. Let's get all the dubbing wax set up to the top because we just put just a little on the bottom there. And dubbing wax is key. Again, always big fan of the Wopsy. The medium sticky works really good. Okay, so let's take that first shoulder, stick it up in the loop. Press it up to the space you want it to be. In this case, it's going to be about an inch, inch and a quarter. Same thing with the forward hackle. And you notice I use two fingers and tip my loop open, so this is an easy installation. Then you can just pinch it back, and now it's all captured in. So the usual, once it's in, let's spread them out a little bit, even them up. Take my dubbing tool, pinch, a good hard spin. Chase that down. I'm just going to use the my pick here just to get the first run through it, so I don't break a bunch of stuff off. And then I'm going to use my brush. Really cool tool for this. Get out of there. Okay, let's give that a little twack there. Get some water here. Fold these back. Let's push it back and pinch. Part and pinch. Rocking back and forth will help those things get aligned so you get a nice clean hackle here. And then start wrapping just in front of where the legs went down. And if you need to, remember to push up on the bottom of the cone to recenter it so your hackles will roll nice and evenly underneath that cone. So you end up with a good even distribution. 
now that we're all the way forward, go for one more, wrap the thread, tie this off. out and then we'll throw a whip finish in here like to make sure that stuff is down good okay let's cut that off let's take a little toothbrush let's comb out this shoulder and hackle legs free brush 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 <laughs> take that out okay so with all that pulled apart I check with my hook eye up I'm gonna just pull this forward Sticking on the hook, on the tang of the shank. Let's brush this back out. The unstuckies off there. Brush out. And in this case, most of the time, I always make the rubber legs and uneven lengths so they swim differently. And in this case, they've all turned out that way pretty close. So what I'll do is just take in these fat ends where they were matched, trim those off uneven. I like them to be pretty random, honestly. I think they look a lot better in the water than if they, if they land anywhere near each other. They kind of come out the same effect. So there we go. Yeah. Ultra squid. A lot of nice light penetration through there. Some transparency and a ton of wiggle and some pretty crazy looking eyes. <laughs> Thanks for checking in on Jerry's Ultra Hour. <laughs> we uh, sharing our new products with you. Um, you know, check out the, the Aqua Talon hooks and the Ultra Eyes and the new Ultra Rig in the many, many sizes. And of course we have uh, the Ultra Squids and mini Ultra Squids coming down the pipe. People were real fond of the little ones. I really appreciate you guys checking in. Till next time.